Hello, I want to introduce you to Claire Bennett. Claire uh, has a gym and she has a lot more about it. I mean, that's a very simple explanation of who Claire is and I'm sure she'll fill us in a lot more on exactly who she is and what she's about. So Claire, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to me. So can you tell us a bit about yourself? Thank you, it's good to be here. Okay, so um, yes, I have a gym, um, but I'm also a plant-based bodybuilder. So me and my husband both get on stage and compete together as plant-based bodybuilders. Um, and we also, I also teach pole dancing. So I've got a pole dancing studio and I actually was responsible for bringing pole dancing to my city, to Hull, to Hull City, because nobody did pole dancing in Hull till I brought it up. Um, and I also teach aerial silks and hoops. I'm a mum, I've got two children too. So um, I have, I always laugh that I have a lot of balls in the air whilst wearing many hats. <laughs> <laughs> The little I know about you, that sounds just about right. Yeah, pretty much. Now, when, when we were talking about what you and I could talk about today, we, we came up with all sorts of, I mean, there was just so, so many different things we could talk about that I think people would be interested in. But today I want to focus on motivation. I mean, I know you're highly motivated to um, train, eat well and everything else. Um, but there's lots of people out there who aren't. So um, I hope you'll be able to explain how, what motivates you and, and how other people can get motivated yeah. to be, be the change in their lives. Yeah, people say this to me all the time. Well, it's okay for you. You're lucky because you're thin or you're lucky because you enjoy working out and you're lucky because you enjoy that eating that food and that's why you can do it. But it isn't. It's about the fact that I've built up habits and I've built up good habits a little bit at a time um, with a very powerful reason for doing it. So if we talk about motivation and motivation is about um, the willpower to get up and do something on a daily basis. And what most of us don't realise is that willpower is finite and it will run out. And it generally lasts between two and three weeks. And most of us could probably relate to that is that once you you do something and you do it with a bit of vigor for, for, for a while and then it, it it goes again and it wanes and 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 it feels hard to do again um and so willpower alone is never going to get you very far and they've done lots of research and lots of um testing on this and they you know there is a definite um some people have slightly more willpower than others but on the whole it always runs out so we talk about having a why a reason why you should be doing something so if we've got a, why, a reason why, it's generally stronger and would be more of a pull to keep you on that track than I must resist, I must resist, and I must use this willpower. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so your reason why I always talk about should, should make your heart race and your eyes sting when you talk about it so that you, you're passionate. And when you open the fridge door and you think, oh, I'm going to eat that chocolate bar or... You think, oh, I don't want to go to the gym. Um, that, that reason why goes, no, 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 come on. You've got to keep that moving forward. And one of the things, especially about, you know, uh, uh, exercise is one of the things that people often struggle with willpower. And uh, people say, well, you know, you're lucky you like going to the gym. And I say, no, I hate going to the gym. But I, and I hate the feeling that it gives me, but I love the way it makes me look. And that's a very powerful why, is that the reason why I go to the gym is, is looking towards the future and what that will bring me for these small habits. And so I, my why, and, and I tell this, you know, quite standing up and saying, I'm gonna to live to be a hundred, all right? So my goal is, my why is to be a old lady who is independent, who is strong, lean, fully cognitive, can put my own curtains up if they fall down, can dig my own garden, can live independently right into my 90s. And then I'm gonna fall asleep and I'm going to die in my sleep. So I'm gonna have a whole lot of life um, and very much a very short time of dying. Whereas a lot of people have very long, short lives and very long lingering deaths. Yeah, I mean, the, the, so actual, my the, life, the actual figures for that are, are actually truly horrendous. The on average, and you and I are not average and we're not going to be average, but on average, uh, people spend 20% or 25% of their lives um, in an un un unhealthy state. So, you know, if you, if, if you live to you, till you're 80, the on average, 
you, your health would start to decline significantly from age 60 onwards. Goodness me, yes. I mean, it's it, a it, huge it, part of, people, of your life that you're going to be unwell, incapacitated, getting more and more frail, maybe falling and injuring yourself. And but what you're saying is there that. is another alternative. Yeah. Yeah, let's not accept that that's going to be our end. Um, so um, obviously I'm, I'm plant-based and I've been a vegan for six, six years now. I'm into my sixth year. So the food choices that I make are always about bringing me closer. I feed the old lady in me. So I don't feed that inner child, the chocolate and the sweets and the, 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 the treats and the junk food. I feed the old lady in me because what I know is if I that's give great, myself... That's, that's such a great idea. <laughs> yeah, do you know, who do you want to be? Live yeah. like who you want to be. Um, and there's no looking back. It, what is what's been, what's done is what's done. We're going to walk forward and we're going to keep our heads up high and walk forward. And I look forward thinking, if I want to be at that point when I am in my 90s, then what I do today will make a difference. For sure. Yes. For sure. yes. So I lift I, them weights. I eat that good food. Yeah. Make my heart and lungs race. Yeah. Uh, and that's what's going to help me get there. And it's a very, I mean, you've got a very vivid why, haven't you? It's not just, it's not just, oh, I want to live, live a good life until I'm in my 90s and then drop dead. I mean, you, you, you passionate, yeah. You paint it in a very um, clear and positive way. And even yeah. though we're not in the same room, I can feel the energy of that, that vision you yeah. have. Absolutely. And that's, this is my point is that unless you are excited by your reason why, unless you are uh, really excited about what this is going to be and you won't follow it through. So if you're thinking, oh, I need to um, go to the gym and, and lift some weights, but it's really hard. It's, it's a bit, you know, the gym's a bit busy or, you know, it's, it's painful when I do it. And if all you're focusing on is this, then it's not going to be a pleasant experience. But if we focus on my arms are going to be firmer and my bones are going to be stronger. I'm going to be able to run and I'm going to be able to carry my own shopping. And, and you're excited about where, what their results are. This then takes you from being working on what's happening right here, right now. And it makes you focus on, on that process of what's going to happen and how be excited by the process. Today I lifted another, I lifted 10 reps and tomorrow I'm going to do 12. So, uh, a little um, side story to this at the minute. I'm in a group on Facebook with some friends and we're doing a planking challenge and every day we're trying to plank for a little bit longer. Well, it's hysterical, you know, but it's, we're all, we're all doing it. Who yes. wants to plank every day for four minutes? <laughs> but, but we are doing it. And because we can see that uh, we're chasing a goal, you know, we've got something to look forward to. And every day we do that a little bit more, we're excited by the process. And it's that process that's making us switch our videos on and get on our hands again and do it the next day, even though it really hurts. <laughs> do you, I mean, how do you create your why? How do you create that vision of, of why you're doing whatever you want to do? Okay, so this is one thing that I do a lot with people um, quite in depth because it's really important that we get to the niggle bit, the little niggly bit at the end. So let's say your goal is... Um, I talked to a lady and she's in her 30s and she's got two kids and she's overweight and she says, well, I just want to lose weight. Well, that's not really a strong enough goal to say, well, we all want to lose some weight. You know, what, what's your weight going to be? And, how, you know, we'll, we'll aim to get to £10 off. It, it's not that enthusiastic. But if we say, so, but why is that important to you? Why do you want to lose the weight? And she may say something along the lines of, well, then I'll look better in my clothes. And then you go, so, but why do you want to look better in your clothes? And... And that comes down to something a bit more, well, so when I'm out, people look at me and go uh, and build my self-esteem because they say, you look good, you know, you feel good. And then you can go, but why is that important to you? Why do you want other people to make you feel good in what you're doing? Um, and you build that down and then you find that, well, my husband would be proud to think that people are looking at his wife going, how gorgeous is my wife? And then, and then why is that important? Well, if my husband's proud and I've got a loving, strong relationship, then, you know, we are going to be secure and, and together as a team. And that's what it boils down to. It's her security. You know, it's not about I need to lose 10 pounds. She wants to feel secure in her skin and in her relationship. Or she might say something like, well, if I wasn't as big, I could run with my children more. And my children will look back on me then and go, 
my mum was a joining in do it mum yeah. you know um, yeah. and that that might be exciting for her um so you want to wingle it right down to the very so you can't say why again so if after each question why do you want to do that why is that important why would you want to achieve that to the point where you're at the point where you're crying and your heart's racing and you say I can't that is it that's my ultimate reason why so when when you ask me about why am I why am I plant-based well I'm vegan for the ethical reasons why because I don't see the difference I don't want to hurt an animal and I want to live in a way that is um that I'm not putting harm on this world and I'm not leaving it any worse and then you go why is that important um you know so that I know that I've done the right I've been kind I've lived in, in a, a life that's um put into added into this world and added value to the world or you go well I'm plant-based because I want the health and that's where my little old lady comes in I'm not going to be a little old lady I'm going to be tall and I'm going to be strong <laughs> I'm not going to be one of these little curly little old ladies yeah um, and that more than anything is is really powerful it's really powerful to me um you know good genes helps but let's hope that we can <laughs> we can change that yeah, I mean, I meet people from time to time who go to me things like, oh, I ought to lose weight, I ought to lose five pounds, or I ought to lose a couple of stone. And you just think, you know, they're not going to do it. How many years have been they, have they been going, I ought to lose weight? You know, I mean, people, some people say that for their whole lives. And every yes. so often, go on a diet and try to do it with completely, as you say, with willpower. Yeah. And yeah. willpower oh, will only get, keep you going for so food. long. Yeah, eating the same food, but a smaller portion. Yeah. So then you're hungry, you've got no willpower to stick at it. So yeah. eating the same food that you were as a smaller portion, you know, what's that saying? Um, you know, it's, you do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. And I hope that this is something that you will, people will create a different result because we are looking at that bigger picture. What's that ultimate reason why? And then we're going to really break it down and we're going to think about how can we, is it achievable for starters? So there's no good somebody coming to me who's, um, uh, I don't know, I'm on think now. <laughs> somebody who's got one leg and they said they're going to grow a leg back because that's not going to happen, is it? No, so we have to no. make sure it, it is achievable. So um, for, for somebody who is, you know, I don't want to talk to somebody who wants to lose weight and they've been 20 stone all their lives and now they want to be eight stone. You know, that's not, it's not achievable for their frame, for their health, for, the, for anything. Um, so we've got to look at a goal and make sure it's what we call a smart goal. Is it is it um, something that we can uh, we can we can track so we know that we're on that right process? Yeah. So um, you're looking at is it um, specific? So let's be really break it down. I'm going to lose um, ten pound. Okay. So is that ten pound measurable? Yes, because we can get on the scales and we can see that every day I'm losing some weight. So is that agreed so is it something that I know I can achieve and I'm and I'm agreeing to been able to stick by that and I feel comfortable with it is it realistic you know realistically can I lose 10 pounds so I couldn't lose 10 pounds you know at my starting weight but somebody else who weighs a lot more could lose 10 pounds so we've got to think is that realistic for your shape and your body and then we need to know when you want that to be achieved by so if we want to say I want to lose that 10 pounds and I want to lose it in six weeks yet it's taking me you know six years to put it on and I'm not going to lose it in six weeks, but I can be realistic and time-based about what I could expect to lose on a regular basis. This then builds confidence and it builds self-esteem in the fact that you are, again, looking at that process. What's that weekly process? What's that daily process? The daily process is eating my salad, going for a walk, um, you know, doing the, uh, doing the things I say I'm going to do. And that's going to give me, if every day I've done what I've said I'm going to do, in for a walk, ate my salad, you know, done my exercises, I'm, I'm there, tick, good day, next day. So then that's my daily goal. My weekly goal might be to um, make sure that I've done a long walk or I've, I've hit my target on my weight loss. And then you can build that on that, the process of that to gain self-esteem and to feel the momentum that comes from, from achieving a goal as well. And then if you follow the process, the outcome will, it will happen. It will happen because if you're doing the do on a regular basis, you can only get there in the end, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. think it helps to have somebody that you're accountable to? Mm. You know, so you've, 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 set, you've got your motivation, you've set your SMART goals. Um, is it good to have somebody 
that you're accountable to. Um, I mean, I'm always, before you answer that, can I just say, I mean, people often recommend this and I'm, I'm, sometimes I think you've got to be really careful who you choose. I mean, I remember talking to a friend once who was trying to lose weight and she said, my husband colludes with me because he loves pizzas and he knows I shouldn't eat pizzas. But if I'm sort of getting tempted, he won't say to me, you know, remember, you know, remember your goals, remember what you're trying to achieve. He'll go, oh, yeah, yeah, let's, let, you know, let's just have one. One won't matter. You know, so I think mm. you've got to sort of choose yeah. the people who you sh- whose go- with whom you share your goals. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I, I totally do not believe that anybody should decide they're going to lose ten pound. Go onto Facebook, tell the world because they think that it's going to make him stick to it. Because all that does is takes you into a. If it doesn't happen, you become a bit shameful. You know, you get a bit of a hit on your ego, and it actually stops you from trying harder next time. So I would suggest never to do that. Um, if you if you can't in order to stick to a goal, um, you have to have the right environment. And having people who you live with who are not 100% tied into your reason why and are not 100% going to help you, then you're going to have a much harder time, for sure. And then you do need somebody else that's not so much be accountable, but is going to be there doing it with you. So doing that, that with you and supporting you. Because at, at having people at home who are not willing because you need a clean environment to be able to do the weight loss or to do the goal so if your environment's not right but whatever that goal may be if that goal is to go to the gym or to eat better if you've not got the right trainers and the right clothes for the gym you're not going to go if the gym's not close enough and it's not open when you want to be there you're not going to go you have to create the environment and so if you know that you're tempted by certain foods you don't have them in the house you step away from the food forever unfortunately until you can control that you can eat it without over you know overeating it and um, but definitely there are many times it's a really about making sure that these foods are not available to you and when people don't support you they've not bought into your why which probably means that you haven't got strong enough why because if somebody who really loved me and I was really powerful with my why right everybody's on board with me they're on board with me and if they're not on board with you you might not quite have have, have nailed that does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, so, so, idea. so go back and revisit your why. Yeah, yeah. and and make it, it stronger, more vivid, more meaningful. Yeah, absolutely. Do your vision boards, whatever it needs. And if you've got somebody that's not very supportive at home, um, if they divorce them because they're not worth having. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I, I hear this a lot, and people go, "Well, so you can go on the diet, but I don't need to." But if that. If that diet isn't about weight loss, the diet is about becoming healthier and um, living longer, being disease free, then yes, of course you need this diet. You, you, we're, not in, we're not talking about weight loss. The weight loss will come because I'm eating healthy. The weight loss will happen as a byproduct of eating for a longer life because the foods that are going to give me a longer life are also going to give me a healthier heart. They're going to give me a healthier brain and they're also going to make me lose body fat. So it's, Kind of like having that, the way that your my, if your why is about the longer term healthy um, and less about the little bits that, are, that you want right here, right now, the process will bring it. Yeah. I always say eat for health and weight loss will follow. And yes. people yes. living out, yes. yes. one of the things, we, I'm, I've been plant-based, is one of the things that we come across quite a lot is somebody saying, well, you can go plant-based, but I still need to eat my meat. And in situations like that, um, where somebody is really not willing to, to give up on that side, then I would I would do the, the the whole thing of doing a plant-based meal and then adding meat to it later and having meat pre-cooked that doesn't cook while you're cooking your food because then you're tempted to eat it. It's pre-cooked and it's in the fridge and then you literally put their dinner on a plate, you warm their meat up quickly and you put it on the plate and you've not got that, you know, when it's tantalising, when it's yes. smelling and when yes. it's cooking, that's really hard for people to sort of, when they want to eat that meal, you know, they miss that meal. So just start with plant-based meals and then add their topping, which is what I did with my husband for a long time because I went vegan before he did. So I would just create a plant-based healthy meal that was living in a way that was going to make us, you know, disease-free. And and I just chucked some chicken on. 
you know like <laughs> it was already pre-cooked and out the way yeah so I might I might have had to have cooked it at some point but I would have cooked it um for me it wasn't an issue but if it's a problem for you cook it when you're not hungry so that you're not tempted to eat it cook it so you get it out of the way put it in a plastic tub in the fridge and then when you have to put that meal on the table you you're not you're not faced with it you're not faced with that dilemma of i would love to eat that chicken breast but i can't because i'm on a plant-based diet <laughs> you know when you're in the many years especially not an issue no yeah great yeah. advice great advice what what about junk food i mean you know people a lot of people's da- downfall is junk food in all its shapes and sizes um yeah. and of course you know if you find it really hard not to eat i don't know crisps chips chocolates yeah. cakes biscuits um yeah, well, see, you know i mean they're on un- they're what? unhealthy for you um people know that they're calorie dense so they make yeah. losing weight more difficult people know that i guess you'd say go back to your why would you yeah yeah what is your why what is what is so as if i want to be a healthy 95 year old lady then is eating crisps Mm, junk food now is that doing that for me the people who have lived the longest in this world yeah we talk about the blue zones area ate predominantly a plant-based diet made from beans and you know whole grains so therefore if i want to live that life i've got to eat that type of food so for me now my taste buds have changed but it is difficult to start with when you're when you're first changing your diet over and you you get you know that food is manufactured to make you want to eat more so it, it's got a, you know, there are chemicals in that. There are, there are chemicals in that food that makes you go, oh, that is so nice. I just can't stop. And um, one of my topics I'm going to put on my Facebook this week is about um, know your trigger foods, know what triggers you. So if you are me, I'm a sweet tooth. So I'm the type of person that if I've had something sweet, oh, my God, there's no stopping me. You know, pudding belly never shuts. It's always bad. <laughs> and chip belly, chip belly never shuts. And so I know this. So one, when this feeling comes to me, I can reason with myself, right? That is your pudding belly opening and growling at you. It's not what you need. It's what you're craving. Um, and if you give it time, it will pass. And it always does. But most of the time, I don't have anything I can eat in the house. <laughs> so if I can open all the cupboard doors, there's nothing there for me to eat that would, would, that was, that would do that. Yeah. So again, clean environment. Um, but you have to understand that this food has been manufactured in a way that is to make you addicted to it. So you want to come back over and over and over. It makes you hit that dopamine hit. It makes you want to think about it, you know, ponder on it, drool about it and eat it. Um, I think I think that's quite a good thing, you know, if you're um, if you're quite rebellious by nature. I, I saw an interesting, so there was some interesting research um, about if small, to get small children to eat their veggies, you have to tell them, you know, you can grow and be like Superman if you eat your veggies <laughs> or you can run really fast. But when you get to teenagers, teenagers, you talk about, you know, these these um, big corporations are only out to get your money off you, that they deliberately um, make food that you'll get addicted to. And the teenagers then start to reject it because they're in that very rebellious yeah. phase. Yeah. So Absolutely. I think, you know, for us older people, I mean, I use this myself sometimes, you know, because I'm quite a rebellious sort of person. So, so if I'm sort of, I don't know, in a supermarket and, and just seeing all this chocolate and stuff and I, and I think, oh, yeah, I'll just have a bar of chocolate. And then I think, no, come on, they've put this there deliberately. You know, yep. because they expect yeah. you to take it. I'm not going to do that. I'm my own yeah. person. I'm stronger yeah. than them. And Absolutely. it allows me not yeah. to do it. Building that awareness of knowing why you're, th- why you're making that decision and why you're making that choice. Um, and understanding that I've made this decision based on the fact that it's next to the till or it's there to, to, to you know, to make me want to eat this food. And that can be really helpful in the fact that you go, well, that's not my decision, is it? Somebody else has made that decision yeah. for me. Yeah. And yeah, I, I can, it, there are, you know, it's, I think, I think know your trigger foods, know what triggers you and when it triggers you and how it triggers you. And if you have got some understanding about that to, to start with, then that's half the things that you don't need to think about with, you know, your willpower and things like that. Um, some of the things I talk about with willpower, um, going back to um, decision-making, is that I don't know if many people know this, but we actually only have um, a 
uh, a finite amount of decisions we can make in a day before they get a little bit frill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can't remember the exact number. So it's, let's say it's seven decisions we can make in a day, good decisions we can make in a day. And then we can't make our minds up. So let's say we get up in the morning and we think about what am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? That's one decision. Then we go, what am I going to eat for breakfast? There's two. And then you get to mid-morning and then you think, what can I have for my mid-morning snack? And then you get to dinner time. And then you've made a few decisions during work. And dinner time, you go out and you go, what should we have for dinner? You're almost at seven decisions before lunchtime. Then you wonder why you come home and then you can't make good decisions when it comes to eating tea and eating the food that goes around tea. So I always say to people, make sure there's a plan and a prep for everything that you're going to do. So that saying of fail, the saying of fail to plan, then prepare to fail is very true. So when I get up in the morning, I set my stall out. I know what I'm going to eat at what time and when I'm going to eat it. And um, so I know I know it's ready. When I cook, I cook on mass. So my fridge is absolutely full of food. It's always got like tubs of beans and lentils already made up. So, uh, you know, it, when I go downstairs and somebody says, what's for tea? In fact, a couple of weeks ago, my daughter came into me and she said, what's for tea? And I said, oh, I've got, I'll do some mashria and some, um, some veggies and things. And then she came back about 10 minutes later. She said, where's my dinner? I said, I'm cooking it. She went, what do you mean you're cooking it? Because <laughs> normally it's in a tub and I just go and put it. And it's always, oh. and she was like, what? <laughs> How long will this be? <laughs> it's like, it's like 10 minutes, I promise you. But it was, it, you know, that just shows how prepared I am on most days that I can actually walk in through the door and I can put food on the table really quickly because I've got things cooked and ready. So along with having a reason why, having that plan and your smart goals. So, you know, my goal is to make sure that I cook enough food on a Monday to get me through till Wednesday. And then on a Wednesday, I cook enough food to get me through till Saturday. Um, that way that you are, um, you're using your process of having the food in place, that's a little goal to reach. So that's one of your goals and your food's ready, which means that you're eating that healthy meal versus going up in the fridge door and going, what can I cook and eating stuff while you're thinking about yeah, it? Yeah. And then you yeah. are ready to eat your tea very quickly and you you know what's coming up. Um, it helps to keep you on that track. So Fantastic I advice. Really and if yeah. It's, yeah. You know, even if it's going to the gym or going for a walk, um, you know, you've got that little timer on. This is my time. I go. This is what we're going to do. Put my shoes on. I'll be back in 10 minutes. I'll be five minutes. You know, I say go six minutes out and four minutes back. So that makes you go quicker. <laughs> <laughs> it speed up a bit. Um, but, you know, just it's having that plan. This is my time to cook food. This is my time to walk. This is my time. What we're doing now. This is my time. Oh, I'm allowed to read my book now. This is what I do at this time. And yeah. having that routine yeah. and that plan really helps. And you own a gym, and I constantly meet women in particular who go, "Oh, I don't like a gym. I wouldn't go near a gym. I'm too nervous, too anxious, too frightened, too I'm too fat, too unfit, too whatever to go to a gym." What What would you say to women? It may be in their forties, fifties, sixties who are going, "Should I go to a gym now?" Who are not anxious yeah. about it? Yeah, very much. And, and you know what, ladies, and I, and I, honest to God, hand on my heart, I feel your pain because I've been in this fitness industry for like 25 years now. Yeah. And I've been in gyms all over England. And when I get to a gym, that's not my gym. I can't wake out. Oh, my head goes. I want to go to the treadmill. I'm really conscious. If I'm doing something wrong, people are looking at me. The people are laughing at me. They're thinking I'm foolish. I can feel all of that. Um, and that's really hard. Um, so my advice is, if you're going to, right, it's paramount that women need to resist and train. And you know this, Jane, right? You've got to lift weights. We must be lifting weights since our, especially in over 15, we must be lifting weights. Yeah. And so my advice is, is find a gym that's got someone that's going to give you a program. And the program that you've got, you've got that you can follow it. You've got somebody that comes around with you initially, get a personal training session, just put on the be fine, right? Get them to write your program, show you how to use the machines. Use machines which will make you feel comfortable. Use machines that you are that you can sit on without thinking, is my bottom stuck in the air? Is you know, find anything to start with that you feel comfortable with. If you don't want to stand in front of a mirror, do not stand in front of a mirror. Do whatever it takes to do to get you into that gym, doing something and then leaving with a spring in your step. Because if there's no spring in your step, you're not gonna go back. Yeah. You, everybody feels intimidated to start with. And I um there are 
you know, there's no, there's nothing that's going to get that through apart from you walking through that door, feeling confident because you've got something to follow. So get your plan. So you know what you need to do. Find your favorite outfit that makes you feel good. If it's a baggy t-shirt, a baggy t-shirt. If it's, a, you know, whatever makes you feel comfortable, be comfortable in your skin when you go in and be confident in what you have to do by following your program. Yeah, my, I mean, my experience of gyms is that people are really friendly and, you know, uh, supportive. And if you if you go to a gym and people aren't like that, then maybe you should go to an, find another gym. Absolutely. And, but I think it's also important. I mean, I go into the gym and say hello to everybody. And I always have, you know, because very soon you get to know people, you know, because people go at the same time as you. So, you know, I so when I begin to recognize people, I don't just ignore them. I, I, I say hello. And then gradually you start to develop com conversations. And yeah. I'm one of the oldest people in the gym I go to. But I talk to everybody, you know, and the young guys will say, oh, hello, Jane. How are you? How's your training going? Yeah. Um, you know, this idea, and, and I'm sure there are gyms like this where people are um, negative, looking at other people and all that sort of stuff. I think yeah, in general, yeah. most gyms, it doesn't happen. And in yeah. fact, what you know, people are so busy doing their own workout that they're not actually looking at you and what you do and what that's you so are right. or are not doing. Yeah. What's that saying that I'm not who I think I am, but I am who I think you think I am. No, yeah, I'm, it's, I believe, I think I'm trying to be who you, who I think that you think that you think I am so that I'm not, you know, we build our perceptions on what we believe other people to be thinking about us, which is just totally not true. Yes. Um, you know, for most of, it, most of the time, but you know, I, I talk to girls all the time and they say to me, Oh God, if I could just have, um, I see one of the, I remember this fun story where this one lady and she had a facelift. She must've been in the sixties and she had a facelift. And I was like, why would you have a facelift? And she said, because I had, been, and I was like, she said, she got these pictures and she showed me these pictures. And I was like, oh, but I never knew you looked like that. Do you know like, but what I saw? Um, I mean, you could see the difference in the, after the facelift, but the point was, is that what she focused on so bad about herself and I can remember as the gym instructors all in the office going, oh, God, did you see them pictures? I didn't know she was, and none of us had, had actually realised that this lady needed a facelift. But her focus obviously was all on that. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. it's funny how when you think other people would be looking at us and thinking these things, and most of the time they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let, let's have a recap, because we've covered quite a bit, I think. I know. <laughs> So, so let's have a recap. So if people want to get motivated, people go, OK, I know I need to get my life in order. You know, I want to be just like Claire. I want to be somebody who's hanging curtains and doing everything in their 90s and then go to sleep. And that's the end of it. It's interesting, actually, my my thing about getting old, my vision of myself old is very much like yours. It's interesting. Yes. It's, there's huge amounts of similarities between them. And, and like you, it's a very empowering yeah. um, vision I have of myself. You know, and I think oh, sadly, yeah. a lot of people's vision of themselves as they get older is of being decrepit, more frail. Yeah. We go, you know, oh, can't get when they forget, fair. when oh, they forget. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be fragile and all the yeah. rest of it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, so to get motivated... They need Build to find their why. Yeah. yeah, but make that why passionate to you. So start with a sentence, whatever that sentence may be. I want to eat a plant-based a plant-based diet. Why? Because I know that it's best for my health. Why do you want good health? Because I don't want to be on medication. Why do you want to not be on medication? You know, because um, it will shorten my life. Why is that important to you? You know, be why? Because I want to see my grandchildren. I want I want my grandchildren to go home to my kids and go, oh my gosh, you never saw what Nana's doing now. <laughs> you know, like, oh, we found her doing this. <laughs> you know, I want my grandchildren to learn. I'm an, I'm an old mum. I was in my late thirties when I had my children, and I that still want. You know, let's find. I want my grandchildren to be able to look at me and think I'm youthful. Yeah, 
And would you, would you like to tell people how old you are? Um, I'm 48. I'm nearly 49. So I'm a few weeks off being 49. You're looking very good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I like to think so. I mean, I like to think that I work hard at it. That's my goal. So um, yeah. I'm the proof's in the pudding, you know. I, yeah, I work hard at what I'm going to eat and what I'm going to do. And when I don't want to go to the exercise, I still do it. Yeah. So when we've got our why, what we need to do then is to break that up into the process, into the smart goals, into smaller steps so that we know that we're going to do it. So what's going to make us um, be a, a live to be a long, healthy life is that we're going to do every day. We're going to eat good food and we're going to do that by planning. We're going to eat a salad every day and we are going to go for a walk every day, which is always the best thing I give to everybody. And if you can do that, you know, that's your very best step. And then you take them off process will happen because if you put in the good stuff you'll put the bad stuff will just be taken out because it won't fit with your why so when the why is strong enough I don't want to eat uh this processed rubbish food I don't want to eat it because I think that doesn't fit to get me to a hundred years old and it's not fitting with my daily goals of doing good process yes. so if I'm yes. eating a piece of cake, big giant piece of cake which I would love to do but then that day is not a tick day is it so there's been no there's been no tick there today because I've eaten that big piece of cake. But I might have said to myself, I'm going to eat half the cake and I'm going to enjoy it for what it is. I'm going to tie no immersion to it. I'm going to eat that piece of cake and I'm going to enjoy and savour the sweetness and the feeling of it and give it a tick because I've ate it without any guilt, without any, without any repercussions, without any, now I have to go do extra exercise. I ate it, I enjoyed it, it made me feel good and I'm going to be happy with that. And the next day I'll start again next meal i'll start again <laughs> yeah i think if you can I, mean, I, I eat cake i eat chocolate from time to time ice cream stuff like that um i know i mean 30 40 years ago if i had an ice cream it would then be oh I've broken my diet i might as well have another one and yeah. then by the end of the day i would have eaten two ice creams and a packet of biscuits and possibly yeah. some yeah. chocolate you know um whereas now i can eat a bar of chocolate and, and then it's done with. I don't, because yeah. of that, it's, it's surrounded by that yeah. big um, yeah. sense of how I want my body to feel. Yeah. And I know Absolutely. that if I keep on eating chocolate and keep on eating cake, it's going to yeah. feel horrible. It's really empowering, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. I think so. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So when we've, when we've taken, when you've got this, you know, share it with your nearest and dearest, get them on board, clean out your environment, you know, make sure the food's not around. Be ready for that, you know, that war. Whatever exercise you need to do, make sure that you've fitted it into your diary and it's a the non-negotiable. It's the non-negotiable. It has to be done. To get that tick, you have to do your exercise and you have to eat some salad. So you have to eat some fruit and some vegetables every day and you have to do some exercise. Non-negotiable. <laughs> and then from that, you know, you're ticking the process, your self-esteem's growing, your confidence is growing. And before you know it, it's just your lifestyle. It's just what you do. Which is where yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's right. I think that's maybe the bit, the the step that people don't get when they're beforehand because they see it as always this. I'm going to need to be self disciplined and stuff. But if you do it for long enough, it is. It's just your way of life. It's the way you eat, yeah. the way you drink, the way you yeah. exercise, the way you. Yeah look after your emotional health and stuff yeah and so yeah. it's just it's a it's a habit like yeah. maybe have you know before maybe eating a biscuit or a piece of cake with a cup of coffee yeah was a habit now it's yeah. you've got different habits and they're just yeah. as e when they become habits they're just as easy as the cake as the, old as, as the coffee and cake was yeah and you don't miss it you don't no. miss the old stuff you think you will you think i cannot live without this food and oh, I cannot live, you know, without it. And you do. And, you know, when I look back at some of the things I ate, then to what I eat now, uh, I used to think I could never live without cheese. <laughs> My is <laughs> without cheese. <laughs> and I don't even miss it now. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. So what, what you're absolutely saying is get yourself a passionate why and then Absolutely. you will be able to make the changes that you need to make and they will Absolutely. become become a habit become part of you and so then yes. you're not using willpower it's this vision of what you are and who you are yeah yes yeah absolutely yeah nailed it thank you very much indeed i've really enjoyed talking to you 
I think you're a great yeah, inspiration for lots of people. I know you've got lots and lots of posit positivity and it's really great for you to share with us how you motivate yourself because uh, and give us real real life examples of how that works. So thank you very much indeed. No problems. It's a pleasure to talk to you all. I hope I've helped. <laughs>